Welcome to our channel with new episode. Is there another mysterious planet between Mars and Jupiter? NASA has made an incredible discovery in our solar system that suggests this might be true. The idea of another planet existing somewhere in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter is not new. As early as the 18th century, scientists found evidence of another planet that, from a purely mathematical point of view, should be right there. What new evidence has NASA now found, and does this planet really exist? Back in the 18th century, German astronomers Johann Daniel Tischers and Johann Elert Bode developed a mathematical rule stating that there must be another planet between Mars and Jupiter. Today, this idea, based on mathematical statistics, is known as the Tischers Bode rule. The two astronomers measured the distances of the planets from the Sun and established a certain order. According to this, there should be another planet where the asteroid belt is. In the 18th century, the publication of the theory led to an intensive search for this missing planet. However, only one object was found, and scientists are still not in complete agreement as to whether it is a planet or not, Ceres. With a diameter of around 940 kilometers, this small body in the asteroid belt is large enough to have a roughly round shape due to its gravity. But is this really the missing planet? Recent calculations say no. There must be, or at least have been, a much larger object at this location. Careful new analyses of planetary orbits, also with the help of modern astronomy, have provided evidence that there should actually be a planet in the gap between Mars and Jupiter. Since the discovery of the asteroid belt, there has been speculation about its true nature. Could the many hundreds of thousands to millions of chunks in this section be the debris of a larger planet? It's exciting to think that the asteroid belt is actually a debris field. Millions of objects caught here are probably bound by the gravitational pull of Jupiter, and we can be glad that the largest planet in the solar system binds all this debris to itself. Otherwise, they would fly through the solar system as dangerous projectiles. The objects in the asteroid belt range from tiny grains of dust to larger bodies such as the dwarf planet Ceres. However, Ceres is an exception. Most of the rocks are typical asteroids with diameters ranging from a few meters to several kilometers. Asteroids are typically not round but rather misshapen chunks. Evidence that these are not asteroids but planetary fragments first emerged when scientists examined the region in detail and took measurements. They noticed an apparently chaotic distribution and the large amount of material in this belt. Computer simulations showed that the way the chunks are distributed does indeed point to a possible catastrophe. But what is strong enough to destroy an entire planet? Before we look at possible answers to this question, let's consider what speaks against this idea. Many scientists are certain that so many rocks have accumulated in this region because Jupiter exerts an immense gravitational pull. This would mean that Jupiter has bound many loose objects that were once distributed throughout the solar system to itself over time and that these objects did not form in this position. Analyses of the composition of various asteroids further indicate that these bodies have very different origins and formation histories, which argues against the theory of a single destroyed planet. Many asteroids have complex and diverse chemical compositions, but a hypothetical common planet of origin would have left behind fragments of similar composition. Most of the asteroids consist of mixtures of silicate rock and metals, as well as organic substances, and some are at least partially made of ice. All of this speaks against fragments of a single planet. Was the asteroid belt once a planet? Can you even begin to imagine what forces would be necessary to destroy an entire planet and break it up into fragments? An unfortunate hypothetical planet could have been the victim of violent collisions, or it could be possible to imagine unusual gravitational disturbances that could break a planet into pieces. One conceivable scenario would be a massive collision with another planet or a very large asteroid. Such collisions were more frequent in the early days of the solar system, a time when planet formation was still in full swing and space was filled with large quantities of protoplanetary material. The planets were often still tumbling through the solar system on chaotic orbits, and there were frequent collisions. One theory suggests that this is exactly how our moon could have been formed. Allegedly, a planet that no longer exists today collided with Earth, and on impact, the mass blasted off the still young, hot Earth, which later became the moon. So, could the fragments in the asteroid belt be the remains of this hypothetical planet? 
Many scientists today question the traditional story of how our moon was formed. Some believe that moons in our solar system formed similarly to small planets and were then captured by the gravitational pull of larger planets instead of orbiting the sun. For instance, Titan and Europa, two of the largest moons, are about the same size as the largest dwarf planets. There's hardly any difference in composition and shape between these moons and dwarf planets. A direct hit by another large object could potentially tear a planet into pieces. Computer simulations have shown that the kinetic energy from an impact can be enough to fragment an entire planetary body. These fragments could end up in the asteroid belt, be thrown out of the solar system, or even burn up in the sun. Another scenario involves a planet interacting with the gravity of a nearby massive object. This could be another star passing through our solar system or a very large planet being pulled from its orbit. Such events could exert enough pressure to crush or displace other planets. For example, Neptune may have been pushed to its current position by such an event. A third theory suggests that dark matter accumulating in the core of a planet could lead to an internal explosion, tearing the planet apart from the inside. NASA scientists have proposed that the rocks in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter are not fragments of a destroyed planet but building blocks of a planet that never formed. These chunks could have gathered to form a planet but were prevented by the gravitational forces of Jupiter. This theory aligns with the 18th century idea proposed by astronomers Titius and Bode. Jupiter's immense mass exerts both binding and disruptive influences on the asteroid belt, potentially preventing the objects from merging into a larger body. However, the total mass of the asteroid belt is less than one thousandth of Earth's mass. Computer simulations suggest that some primordial mass may have fallen into the Sun, and some of the objects in the Kuiper belt could be parts of a rocky planet that never formed. Ceres, now classified as a dwarf planet, is an intriguing case. It is the largest object in the asteroid belt, but only has about one six thousandth of Earth's mass. This is smaller than the combined mass of all other objects in the asteroid belt. Despite having enough material to form a larger planet, Ceres remained relatively small. Ceres was discovered on January 1, 1801, by Italian astronomer Giuseppe Piazzi. Initially thought to be the missing planet, Ceres was later reclassified as an asteroid and then as a dwarf planet in 2006. Unlike other dwarf planets, Ceres is located in front of Neptune's orbit. Studies by NASA's Dawn spacecraft, which orbited Ceres from 2015 to 2018, found evidence of water, organic materials, and possibly even a subsurface ocean. This suggests that Ceres may have been geothermally active in the early days of the solar system. In conclusion, the asteroid belt's nature and origin continue to intrigue scientists and spark various theories. While some believe it consists of fragments from a destroyed planet, others think it represents a planet that never fully formed. Ongoing research and exploration, such as NASA's Dawn mission, contribute to our understanding of this enigmatic region of our solar system. The potential for a planet between Mars and Jupiter remains an exciting topic for scientific investigation. Advances in technology and further space missions will likely provide more answers and possibly unveil new mysteries about our solar system's formation and evolution. For those interested in the wonders of astronomy and the latest discoveries in space, subscribing to channels and following updates from reputable sources like NASA can provide a wealth of information and keep you informed about the latest developments in the field. The study of our solar system is an ever-evolving journey, and each discovery brings us closer to understanding the complex and fascinating universe we live in. Thanks for watching. Keep watching and stay curious about us. Subscribe to our channel for more exciting discoveries and updates from the world of astronomy.